Don was starting to shiver at that point. The two greatest fighters in Arryn, the two that he'd hoped to learn from originally, had both fallen in battle and showed no signs of getting back up or launching another attack, and the army of Arryn was just as helpless to rejoin the fight for the moment. There wasn't going to be any backup, or anyone to rescue him, and just as Don had feared throughout the whole battle, Grant had had only one real objective. For some reason, that ancient mighty warrior wanted to fight with Don DeLay. Don didn't know why Grant was so eager to fight him, and he wasn't about to ask. After what he'd just seen, he had no illusions about being able to even injure Grant, much less survive a fight with him, and he definitely didn't want Grant's attention. Quickly, he climbed over a large stone outcropping in the wall, but he didn't try to get back inside the town. After all, if Grant was after him, then entering Arm was only going to lead him to more innocent people to hurt. And although Don was in a panic at that moment in search of some means of survival, he knew that he wouldn't have been worthy to become a knight if he'd been willing to endanger the innocent. For several seconds, Don had absolutely no idea what to do next, but at last he paused and tried to calm himself down as he hid behind part of the wall, still concealed from Grant's sight. Don knew that he was probably about to die, but his chances of survival wouldn't improve unless he calmed down and tried to think straight. Recently, when he'd helped the guards of his own hometown to feed a pair of orcs, and then when he'd gone through Antoine's training, he'd been thinking straight in both instances, and Don was convinced that if he wanted to have any hope of escaping from Grant, he needed an even better plan than the ones he'd used then. Come out! Grant continued to bellow. Face me! You're the only one here who really knows what it takes to be a warrior. Show me the skills you've learned and I'll show you mine. In spite of Grant's thunderous shouting, however, Don was struggling to concentrate, trying his best to think about the things around him carefully. Aside from climbing, it was the only real skill that he had, the skill to think things over carefully enough, looking for opportunities and values in the things around him. Don wasn't sure how long he'd had that skill of contemplation, but it was, he started to realize, a real advantage, because suddenly he found that he had a plan. After all that Don had seen, it was obvious to him that Grant was a great deal stronger, faster, and tougher than any fighter in Arryn. He was so tough, in fact, that he'd been able to even outdo the extremely advanced Jera techniques that had been used against him. Don had never heard of anyone using Jera on the level that he'd seen Antoine and Harold display that day, but it hadn't meant a thing against Grant. Trying to strike him with a powerful attack had been useless, and trying to toss him around and make him feel disoriented hadn't worked any better. Obviously, Grant was the kind of warrior who'd learned how to be clever in the use of his own power for the purpose of defeating different kinds of enemies, but he still relied on his own power for almost everything. Don had only seen Grant use his surroundings to attack his enemies once, and only for the purpose of forming a barricade. It wasn't much of a weakness, but it was the best that Don had been able to find. It also didn't seem as if Grant had gone through training anything like Antoine's. The way that he shouted challenges at Don instead of charging towards the wall indicated that he wasn't able to determine Don's location unless he could see him, or unless he came across some other obvious evidence of his presence. That also seemed like a potential advantage, Don realized. Quickly and silently, Don crawled along the wall. It was, he decided, a shame that the wall was made of stone, because if it had been at least a little rubbery like the limbs of the liana trees back in Troma, he could have jumped right to the trunk of the nearest pine tree. As it was, he was going to have to do some genuine climbing, and he'd need to wait for an opportunity to move without being spotted. Given how good Grant's awareness of his surroundings seemed to be, that would probably be the hardest part to accomplish. Of course, the whole plan really hinged on one thing. Don had seen Grant perform some very impressive feats when he'd been fighting the two teachers from Arryn, but if he could leap from one tree to the next just as easily as Don could, then that would be the end of it, and Don would be doomed. Don watched patiently from the shadows behind the nearest ridge of the wall, waiting for Grant to look away for a moment while gauging the distance between himself and the nearest tree branch, then between that tree and the next, making sure that he could actually pull off the jump that he needed to make. As Grant's voice started to take on a bit of a stern air and his challenges started changing into warnings, however, Don noticed a moment of weakness when Grant looked away from the place where he was sitting and back towards the rubble, as if wondering if Don had been buried in it when Grant had thrown the ballista bolt at it. In that moment, Don made his move, quickly leaping off the wall towards the nearest tree branch, then from there to the trunk of the tree, and immediately from that trunk directly to the trunk of the tree next to it. However, it seemed that as quick and as careful as Don had been, Grant had seen him move for a moment. So that's where you went. Don heard Grant saying from the ground, approaching the tree nearest to the wall. I like this, little warrior. Show me how you fight. Soon, Grant had moved to the base of the tree nearest to the wall and started looking up into its branches. From where he was, Don could see Grant searching the tree as if expecting to find him there. Don hadn't imagined that his ploy would work so well. Since he made no noise and rustled no branches when leaping from tree to tree, it was taking Grant a while to determine where Don had gone. When he finally did realize that Don must have jumped to another tree, however, a broad smile spread across his face. Impressive, Grant remarked. A very wise move, little warrior. 
You react to the superior strength of your enemy with stealth and cunning. I promise, I won't hold back anymore. Don had been afraid that he was going to say something like that, but all that really mattered was what Grant did next. He might use his strength or his skill to try to get out of that situation, and depending on which route he chose, Don might even be able to survive the attack. However, the action that Grant decided to take was shocking and unexpected, even though Don had been trying to plan for it. Almost as soon as he finished speaking, Grant swung one of his arms around in a circle with what must have been his full strength, splintering the trunk of the nearest tree and scattering pine tar and pine cones in all directions. Don was too shocked by the sight to feel relieved that Grant wasn't trying to climb the tree, but not too shocked to move quickly, leaping from the trunk of the collapsing tree to the next one, further away from town. However, that was when something happened that Don had been hoping to avoid. It seemed that Grant had been watching the top of the tree carefully to see what Don was going to do next, and as he'd leapt from the tree, Grant had spotted him. In that moment, a look of awe and wonder spread across the ancient warrior's face, and when he got over his initial shock, his grin started to return, larger and revealing more of his teeth than ever. I can't do that, Don heard Grant mutter in something like amazement. It's a feat of agility and strength, and yet I can't do it. You have no idea how long it's been since I've gotten the chance to say that, little warrior. Thank you. Obviously, there was something about the battle that Grant was enjoying. Maybe he thought that Don's most recent feats represented some hidden power, or maybe he believed that his battle with Don was going to be challenging or difficult, just because Don could do one thing he couldn't. However, whatever Grant's reasoning was, Don knew that he had to keep moving if he wanted to survive. Quickly, Don continued leaping from one tree to the next, sometimes not even taking a moment to steady himself in between jumps, because Grant was still following him with considerable speed, his hands and arms plowing through tree trunks as fast as Don could escape from the trees they were attached to. Soon, the fallen trees started to get in Grant's way just a little, but they were always swept aside as he pursued his small enemy, or else they were crushed under his feet. At last, though, Don leapt from the last available tree, which was right at the base of a large stone cliff. From there, he could see that Grant was almost to the tree that he was sitting on, and suddenly, as he looked up at the cliff face, another idea occurred to him. Don's last ploy had already slowed Grant down quite a bit and would undoubtedly weaken his techniques in any future battles, but suddenly he realized that there was also a way that Grant might be injured. Quickly, he leapt from the tree he was sitting in and landed on an outcropping of the stone cliff in front of him. Don had seen what Grant's punches had done to the trees, and he knew that even one of those blows would have been enough to kill him, but he had one last ploy to try out against the ancient warrior. Don was amazed by his good fortune as he looked across the ledge he'd reached with that last leap. It was just large enough to hold him, and a large supply of old pine cones were scattered across it. They were just what he needed, too. Quickly, Don seized one in each hand, being careful not to touch the parts with the tar, and then the last pine tree of the area crashed to the ground behind him, and Don knew that Grant had caught up. Little warrior, Grant shouted, still sounding eager. One way or another, you're coming down here. There's no escape now, unless you think you can climb a steep cliff like that. As he looked up at the cliff that towered over his head, Don had to admit that it would certainly have been impossible to climb any further up. From where he was, the cliff surface was almost sheer, and very smooth for rock. Even with his climbing skills, he was sure he couldn't have scaled it with his bare hands. All that Don could really do at that point was execute the last phase of his plan and hope that Grant didn't catch on too soon.